Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you one of my all-time favorite techniques and that is ink blending on a colored cardstock. I actually created this card last year and I had many requests for a video showing how I did that. So that is what I'm going to share with you today. First, let's take a look at some of the products that I'll be using today. Most of these are coming from Gina K Designs. This is the beautiful Butterflies stamp set. And I have also the Just Because stamp set. I'll be using a small sentiment off of here, but you can see there are lots of great sentiments on there. I'll also be using the Master Layout 2. And I'll also have the Master Layout 3. And I'll just be using one of those little flag dies for my sentiment. Now for the ink. I have Blue Lagoon, Tranquil Teal, and I have the Gina K Designs Embossing Ink. And for cardstock, I have the Heavyweight White and also Sea Glass. And then I'll also be using the Gold Embossing Powder. I also have some comfort blocks that I'll be doing some stamping with, and then my blending brushes. So the first thing I want to do is I want to die cut out my sea glass cardstock. I'll be using one of the dies from the Master Layout 2 set. This way my cardstock is ready to the size that I'm going to use on my card front. Then I'm going to start ink blending the edges with Blue Lagoon ink. I'm using a blending brush to do this and I am working on a glass media mat so my brush just glides right onto the cardstock. I like to start off of the cardstock and blend onto it. I'm going to blend all the way around all of the edges, going towards the middle, but not in the middle. I want to leave the center part of this card front, that sea glass color. To me, that's just going to kind of highlight that area and make it look like it's glowing. So after I have my blue lagoon all around the edges, I'm going to come in with the tranquil teal, which is a darker blue. And I'm going to go around the edges of that as well with my blending brush. I'm just using circular motions starting off of the cardstock blending onto it because with the glass media mat, my brush will just glide onto the cardstock. And I'm just going a little bit in the edge. I'm not covering up that blue lagoon. I kind of want to have that smooth transition between the colors. And I wasn't feeling like this was quite dark enough for me. I wanted to have a little bit more contrast to this. And so I'm going to actually bring in a third color that I didn't show in the beginning. This was kind of a last minute decision. So I am going to be bringing in blue denim. Now you could also be using uh, a black, I think would even work. Or even if you have a dark brown, I think would work really well for this. Currently on screen, I'm still using the Tranquil Teal, but I just wanted to explain some other options for you if you don't have uh, the blue denim. So here now is the blue denim on screen. You can see I'm just very lightly going over those outer edges, not really blending in a whole lot. I didn't want to cover up that Tranquil Teal, so just the very outer edges of that cardstock. So here's where the magic happens, and this is what I had been getting asked a lot about. How did I do these butterflies on the background? I am using, for one, I'm using comfort blocks. It's a lot easier to do this using the blocks than it is using a stamping tool. So I took the largest butterfly off of the beautiful butterflies, inked it up really well with the embossing ink, and then just stamping that down onto my cardstock. This is going to give a beautiful watermark type effect to it. It's very faint, but it is so beautiful in pictures and in person, even more in person. So another thing I love about this beautiful butterflies stamp set, other than these gorgeous images, is there is a huge variety. So they're in different sizes, they're flying in different directions, different angles of them. And so I'm using different size comfort blocks just because it's easier, a smaller block with a smaller stamp set, and just inking them up with the embossing ink and stamping them randomly across that background. Also on that stamp set is a really tiny little butterfly that I thought was so cute. I didn't do this in my first card, but it was so cute and it fit right into some of those smaller areas to help fill in the rest of the card. And now here's a little close up of what this background looks like. We want to make sure we're setting this off on the side to dry. There's a lot of ink on here. We want to make sure it's really dry before we do anything else to it. So I'm going to set it off on the side and work on my sentiment. And that is using the Just Because stamp set. I also have a piece of black cardstock laid down in my Misty. 
I picked one of the small sentiments, lined it up on the black cardstock. I'm going to prep that with an anti-static powder tool and then ink up that small sentiment with the embossing ink and stamp that down onto the black cardstock. Next, I'll sprinkle on some gold embossing powder, tap off any of the excess, and then after my heat gun is nice and hot, I'm going to melt that embossing powder. And after this has cooled down for about a minute or so, I'm going to take a Swiffer cloth and just dust off any of that excess powder and help that black really pop. Then I'm going to take a small banner die off of the Master Layouts 3 stamp set and line that up over my sentiment. Now you could definitely just trim this down with your paper trimmer. I for one do not seem to trim very straight when it comes to these small sentiments and I really like the beveled edge that the dies leave. Now I'm not really a huge fan of the flags on the end so I'm just going to take my paper trimmer and trim those off. But you can definitely leave them on or just trim your, your sentiment down with your scissors or paper trimmer. Now I'm going to heat emboss my large butterfly and you could do this with a block but I wanted to show you how to use the misty corners if you've never used them before. I love them especially when I have tight areas like this or you want something to hang off of the edge of your card. So I put my misty corner down in the bottom, lined up the cardstock flush in that corner, moved the misty corner tool and then lined up my butterfly and after I picked that up with the door of the misty, I'm bringing that misty corner back in, putting my cardstock flush against it and holding that with my magnet tool. Then I'm going to prep this with my anti-static powder tool and I'm going to um, uh, stamp my butterfly with the embossing ink. Now a lot of times when you're picking up your stamp off your cardstock, your cardstock likes to shift or get stuck to the stamp. So I find the misty corners so, so super helpful. I also want to show you that I make mistakes too, which I'm leaving in this video and I'm going to show you how I fixed it. So after I stamp this down, I'm going to sprinkle on the gold embossing powder and I thought my cardstock was dry. I thought everything on this background was dry. It was not very dry and you'll see that in just a moment. After I tap off all of this excess, there are going to be some areas where the golden gold embossing powder is sticking to my background. So I am taking a small paintbrush and just dusting off any of that excess powder. And I believe I also dusted off one of the antennas. So I'm going to have to restamp this, which thankfully I left that butterfly in the same position in my Misty tool. So I'll be able to do that really easily. After my heat gun is nice and hot, I'm going to melt the embossing powder. And this is about where I realized that I'm missing an antenna. So I'm going to let this cool for just a few minutes. And I'm going to put this back into my misty tool. Once again, I had used the misty corners to make sure that this was lined up perfectly. And I prepped it again with that anti-static powder tool. So I'll ink this up once again with the embossing ink, stamp that down right over my image that I just heat embossed and sprinkle on that embossing powder again. And you're going to see, I still have a hot mess. This background was not dry, was not cooled off, not cooled off enough. I don't have a lot of patience waiting for ink to dry. So once again, I'm dusting off all of that excess and melting this with my heat tool. So after I had everything heat embossed and I'm still seeing some flecks of gold embossing powder on my background, I thought I would just add to it. Let's make it look like it's on purpose. So I am taking some gold perfect pearls and I also have, I believe it's blue hydrangea. I'll double check and list it down in the video description, but I just put a little bit on my mat and then a few drops of water to each. And I'm gonna mix this up and flick this all over my background. So that way, any dusting of embossing powder looks like the gold perfect pearls and looks like I did it on purpose. So lots of ways to get around things if they don't quite turn out the way you had wanted them to. Now, while I'm finishing up this card here on screen, you can watch as I'm attaching this to a card base. Uh, a lot of times I get asked, why don't I emboss first? Why don't I do the gold embossing powder first? The reason I don't do that embossing first most times is because sometimes dye ink will, it won't stain the embossing, but my embossing, my gold or white just won't be as crisp. So that is why I like to do it at the end. I just really have to have more patience to make sure that that background and all of that ink is dry before I emboss my image. 
So after I attached everything to a card base, I'm finishing it off with some of the Angel Aura uh, sequence mix or the jewels mix from Gina Key Designs. And that is going to finish up my card for you today. I hope you enjoyed this technique. Technique. It is definitely one of my all-time favorites that you'll probably see me do a lot uh, if you follow me. I will have all of the supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon.